Hi everybody, it's Doreen and I'm back today with a birthday card for my grandmother. So come on and join me and I'm going to show you how I made this card. Okay everybody, so I'm going to go ahead and bring up the supplies so we can get started making the card. Now I got the idea to make the card from this card maker sketchbook that's an auntie or Anne's Attic um, book. And I picked this up at Joann's using a 40% coupon. So the sketch that I'm going to be working off of is this sketch right here. It looks like this. And I'm going to make the card similar to this card. So let's go ahead and get started. So first of all, my card measures nine inches by four and a half inches or I'm sorry correction it measures six inches by nine inches and then I've taken and scored it in half to make it a six inch by four and a half inch card and my cardstock is just some of the cardstock that um, I got from work when they were throwing away a bunch of cardstock so now my top layer is from a card stack or card stock by DCWV and this is a really old one it's the citrus stock so my top layer or bottom layer rather it measures four and a quarter by five and three quarters and I've also gone ahead and add some of my pleated ribbon loops down here at the bottom and since this cardstock was um, white on the other side and it was, it was not two-sided, what I did was when I went ahead and bent that corner page back along here, I just took my faded jeans, Distress Ink by Tim Holtz, and colored that in so that it wouldn't be white on the other side when I flipped it over in the corner. And then the other thing I did was I went ahead and inked my edges using the faded jeans. So that's going to lay right here. So what I want to go ahead and do is I want to take my crop a dowel and I'm going to use the smallest setting on the crop a dowel. And I've already marked a little hole with a pencil where I want to put the hole so I can add my brad. So I'm just going to go ahead and line this up. And I'm going to have to take this and put this in front of me for a second so I can see it. And then I'm just going to punch my hole. And there's my hole right there. So now I can go ahead and take my brad. And my brad looks like this. It's a little flower. And I'm going to put that right there. And then we'll just go ahead and pull back the prongs and open up the brad. So then my card is going to, my bottom layer is going to sit like so. I'm going to turn it around just a little bit so you can't see the back of the brad. So now I'm ready to go ahead and tape this down. And I'm going to use my ATG gun for that. Excuse me for the reach. I should have pulled that out earlier. So we're just going to go ahead and make sure we get some tape all the way around on our edges. I'm going to get as close to the edge as possible where that brad is. And then I'm going to get on top of my ribbon loops. And then I'm just going to add some tape in the middle. And then what I also want to go ahead and do is I want to go ahead and put some glue along here on the edge where I have my brad so I can make sure that that sticks down properly on my card. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my card and then I'm going to lay my card down or my top, my bottom layer down on the card and just run it along on the edge here and make sure I have it adhered down. And then I'm just going to get up those glue stragglers from the hot glue gun. 
up. Okay, so now we're ready to go ahead and add our next layers. Now what I've done is I went ahead and I did design this on my Gypsy, but you don't have to have the Gypsy for all of the pieces to make this card. So the first piece we're going to lay down, and this is also from the DCWV Citrus Stack, is this piece right here. And I'm going to lay it this way. This piece measures two and a half by three and a quarter. And I've marked a pencil, a little light pencil mark, where I want everything to line up. So I'm just going to lay everything down first before we go ahead and tape it down. So that's the first piece we're going to lay down. And then for my second piece, I'm going to lay down the smaller piece over here. And this piece measures one inch by two and a quarter. So I'm going to have that one and I've already put a pencil mark where I want it. So that's going to lay right there. And then my next piece measures two inches by three and a quarter. And that piece is going to lay right here. And as I said, you don't have to use your, cut these out with your Cricut. Um, you can just go ahead and measure this using um, your paper trimmer. But I did measure these out on my Cricut because I wanted to lay out the pieces and to see how it's, it was going to look on the card. So I created a template with the card, the front of the card measuring six inches by four and a half inches. And I'll show you what that looks like on my Gypsy. Here is my piece that I cut or draw out that measures the width is six and the height is four and a half. And I lay that out first and then I went ahead and use my and to, to lay this out and to make this four by four and a half by six I used the George and basic cartridge to just use make a square so now then I went back and used a square again and measured out all of my other pieces that I have laid down right here and that was just for design purposes. I did use my paper trimmer to cut everything out. I just wanted to make sure that I was going to um, measure out this, the correct sizes of each square. Because in the actual sketchbook, it does not give you the sizes of everything. So you kind of have to judge what sizes you want to make it. But it does tell you that the card is four and a half by six. So I just kind of played around with it till I got the squares, the sizes that I wanted. So now the next piece I would be laying down is this piece. And this piece is a half an inch by three and a quarter. And so that piece will lay... Let's see, about right there. So now I have the basis of how I want my car to be laid out. And we're going to go ahead and just um, lay everything down with using our um, ATG gun. So let's pull these up. And we'll go ahead and get some tape on our first piece. And as you can see, I do have the sizes on the back of um, my pieces. And I do that because I cut so many pieces, I sometimes don't remember what size I cut them. So I have to write them on the back. And then I also, just in case I decide I want to make this card again or something similar to that, I have a notebook where I keep all of the sizes of all the cards that I make and along with any projects that I do. So we'll go ahead and 
we'll put this down and line it up where I have my little pencil mark. And it's just a faint pencil mark, so it won't you can't see it. And if I will go back later and erase all the pencil marks. So that's our first piece laid down. And now we'll go ahead and add the second piece. And I'm just going to go ahead and use my Tombow since this is such a small piece. And get some tape on there. And I didn't put the size on the back of here, but I did write it down in my little notebook. So I want that piece to go right there. So I'm going to go ahead and lay that down. And I'm going to press really hard on this. I probably might should have used the ATG gun because this is glitter paper. And I do want to make sure that that stays down. So now we'll go ahead and add our next layer. And that is going to go right here. Like so. So I think that I am going to use the ATG gun since the paper, this layer of paper is glitter paper. And I do want to make sure that this stays stuck down. So I'll get some tape in the middle here. And I've gone ahead also and inked my edges using the Tim Holtz Faded Jean. And I'm going to lay this down right there. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and we'll add our last piece. Which is going to line up right here. And we'll use the ATG gun again. Since we are putting this on top of glitter paper, I want to make sure that that does stick down. And we'll line it up. Edge to edge. Like so. And I'm going to place... Oh, actually, I want that over a little bit. So... Let me move that over just a little bit. And then we'll lay it down right there. So now that we've got that added, we're going to go ahead and add my happy birthday. Now the happy birthday, what I've done is I've gone ahead and used my Spellbinders die. And this is from the Fleur de Lis die. And I cut that out, and then I stamped out Happy Birthday. And this is from a stamp set that I picked up off of HSN. It's just the three birds, clearly hand stamps, and it has several stamps inside. There's some for there's some sentiments, there's alphabet and numbers, there's nature, and then there's fancy. So I've just gone ahead and taken the happy birthday from there and stamped it out. And then I took the stamp from the stamp set pocket silhouettes and just stamped along on the edges and down at the bottom. And this stamp set is a is an old stamp set and the stamp looks like that. So and I just picked this up on eBay. And then I went ahead and inked my edges using the faded jeans as well as stamping the happy birthday out in the faded jeans. So I'm just going to place this down right now. I do have it popped up on some dimensionals. And then the last thing I want to put on here is my flower. Now once again I'm using the flower shop cartridge and the flower I cut in several different sizes. So it's key number 15. Go ahead and unplug this. Okay. 
So it is key number 15, which looks like this. And I cut that out at 2 inches, or I'm sorry, 2 and a half inches, 2 and a quarter inches, 2 inches, and 1 and 3 quarter inches. And then 1 and a half. And then for my center, right here, this is key number 5. Let's go to key number five. Whoops, sorry, that's key number four. Key number five, which looks like this. And this I cut out in two inches. And what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've cut out everything used in cream colored cardstock. And then once I had everything cut out, I took my Copic markers and used the airbrush system again. To cut out to color in my um, flower and I use these colors right here and if you're interested in, in what the exact colors are just send me a message and I'll let you know but once I had all of them cut out I went ahead and put them together and what I was trying to do with my colors was to get the colors that are in this portion of the cardstock. So, and then the next, the last thing I did to the flower was I took some of the diamond stickles and just put that in various areas on the flower. So I'm going to have my flower lay right there. So now let's go ahead and put down the happy birthday. So, as I said before, I do have this on some foam tape or foam dots. So, I'm going to go ahead and peel off the foam dots. Okay, so now that I have all my foam dots pulled off or the paper from the foam dots, I'm going to go ahead and press that down. And then I do have a foam dot on the back of my flower, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take my glue gun and get some glue on the flower. Because that way it'll pop up when the glue hardens. And I'm going to go ahead and put that down right there. So that's it for the inside of my card. Now for my inside sentiment, what I've done is I've gone ahead and printed out on my computer a special sentiment to my grandmother for her birthday. So that's it. That's the completed card. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye.